Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. Breaking news coming to us from Bangor Township up near Bay City, and that's where an Oakland County mother and her two young children have been found dead in an apparent murder-suicide. Let's get right to Jermont Terry. He's live in the newsroom. Jermont, what can you tell us? Kimberly and Devin, this uh, story leaves so many people shaking their heads, asking one question, why? Why would a mother hurt her children, and why would that mother drive all the way from Oakland County more than an hour past Bay City to Bangor Township to commit this act? Now, the mother and her two children were all found shot to death behind a building in Bangor Township. Now, that's just outside of Bay City. A maintenance man made the gruesome discovery. The worker wanted to know why a black sedan was parked on the property, but what he found shook him to the core, sending investigators to this area. Now, we're told the children, a boy and girl, were both under the age of five. Each had a single shot to their head. Now, the boy was found just outside the car, his sister, and the back seat. The investigation reveals their mother was in the front seat, also shot with a gun nearby. It's still early, but this may have stemmed from a custody dispute. Now, we're told someone asked investigators in Oakland County to check on the mother and the children last night. That check turned up empty, but today the children and mother were found. It's tragic. Something like this is so horrific that it's just beyond comprehension. I mean, it's just, it's terrible that this took place. And, you know, our agency and our hearts go out to the families or anybody that's involved with the family members. And tonight, a family is trying to come to terms with this difficult and tragic loss of these children and the mother. Now, if suspected that the murders and suicide center around a custody dispute, you can only imagine the father's grief knowing that this is how his children died. Now, it was still unclear what, if any, connection this mother had to the Bangor Township community. Of course, this is an open investigation, but all signs point this being simply nothing more than the murder and suicide. Reporting live in the newsroom, Jermont Terry, Local 4. All right, Jermont, that's just you know, dreadful news. Also breaking right now, a barricaded gunman situation entering now its 14th hour in Troy, and we've learned a SWAT team has just gone inside the home. Take a look at live pictures from the home near Adams and Big Beaver. The standoff began overnight after the suspect fired more than a dozen shots onto the street. No injuries were reported from that. Again, police have entered the home after surrounding it for hours. Neighbors are in the area and are being told to stay in their houses until police give the all clear. All right, let's turn now quickly to the weather and the rain that uh, just doesn't want to go away. Yeah, take a look at four live radar has a lot of green on there and uh, it's uh, going to stay that way for a while. We're seeing some flooding too around town. A closer look at that coming up in just a minute. Let's start things here with Ben. Uh, how about a little break? You know what? I think we can give that to you because uh, at least right now from the city uh, through downriver in the south zone, we are getting a break from that rain and that's going to expand a little bit further north uh, until we get to later on this evening and then that rain is going to resume. But any break is good considering this rain just continues and doesn't want to let up uh, for the last couple of days. Multiple flood warnings are out now as all the rivers, creeks and streams starting to fill up uh, with that frozen ground and those uh, uh, the runoff just doesn't have anywhere to go. So the Rouge River, the Clinton River, Lower Rouge, Mill Creek and multiple locations in Genesee County all under flood warnings until further notice. Most of this is for minor flooding, but there is a flood watch for the entire area that runs through Wednesday afternoon. We expect the rain to finally shut off after the morning commute tomorrow. Temperatures today tied a record high will still be into the 60s by 10 o'clock and that break will extend at least to about mid evening. We get closer to midnight. Cold front gets here and the rain comes back and could be some thunder with it. We'll talk more about what's to come after that in just a few minutes. Guys. All right, Ben, as the rain continues to fall, we are seeing some pretty bad flooding in parts of town. Take a look at this. This is Hanover Street in Dearborn Heights. The water there is so deep, it's almost going from door to door across the block. Jamie Edmonds is there live tonight. Jamie, this is a real mess. Kimberly, Devin, yes, a real mess here on Hanover Street. You can barely see pavement. You can't see sidewalk and in some cases you can't see front yards. You almost can't see a couple cars behind me. It's gotten progressively worse since we've been here throughout the day. Neighbors are worried, but not surprised. Welcome to Lake Hanover. It's the street. Brian Manuel is trying to take everything in stride. We flooded up here last time. We flooded up to the second 
second step here pretty much last time. But the truth is, when he saw the forecast, he knew there would be a problem. When you see the rain coming, you almost expect it, which is unfortunate. But you try to prepare as best you can. This scene is something neighbors on Hanover Street in Dearborn Heights have gotten used to. When it rains, usually the street floods. And if you don't get your car out in time, you're in trouble. We're trapped in our home. Basically, because you can't drive in this, you'll ruin your vehicles. Back in 2014, the water rose so high, the creek behind the houses overflowed, and most of the houses flooded. In 2014, we had to crawl out our window, our kitchen window, because if you would open, the water was higher outside than it was inside. And then when we come out the kitchen window, it was up to our waist right here. The flooding has not reached that point yet today, but that's not stopping neighbors from preparing and hoping for the best. It's mother nature. You can only stop her so much. And neighbors are trying to prepare as best they can with sandbags and the like. So what's the problem here? Well, there's a creek behind these homes. We're at a low point and the water just rises when it rains a lot. I called the city of Dearborn Heights. They applied for grants to help mitigate this problem. They've done that across Telegraph on Hanover over there, bought up houses at better than market value, torn them down, try and fix the situation here. On this side, they just were awarded another grant for flood prevention. They hope to tear down eight homes on this side of Telegraph, hopefully mitigate this problem so the people who are left will not have to deal with this every couple years with a bad flood and sort of every time it rains with a smaller flood. Live in Dearborn Heights, Jamie Edmonds, Local 4. People, Jamie. Okay, thank you. And with weather like this, you'll want to have the Local 4 Acasters app. It's free to download in your app store. Just search for WDIV. Well, all across the state today, flags are at half staff. Governor Snyder ordering that as we honor the life of fallen Detroit police officer Darren Weathers. Weathers was laid to rest today following an emotional ceremony at Second Ebenezer Church in Detroit. Hundreds of fellow officers were there to pay tribute to the officer killed last week during a training exercise in southwest Detroit. We turn to Paula Tutman now, who was there for today's ceremony. And uh, as these uh, terrible occasions always are, Paula, very emotional. Very emotional and very sad. Funerals are sad anyway, Devin and Kimberly, obviously. When you cover the funeral of a first responder, then it's really increasingly more sad. But when you cover a funeral of a first responder so soon, after covering a funeral of another first responder, particularly a Detroit police officer, it's excruciating. Inside Second Ebenezer Church in Detroit, a brief celebration of life. Outside the solemn reality that yet another promising young Detroit police officer has been lost, measured in days. Corporal Justin Broughton can. He made the long drive from Battle Creek just 19 days ago for the funeral of Officer Glenn Doss, and he finds himself here today for Officer Darren Weathers. It's a humbling experience and let you know what we deal with every day. Captain Rory McMahon was here two weeks ago as well. I asked him that they all pray that it'd be a long time before we go to another one, and here we are. So you can only imagine the unbearable pain of the family. A two-year-old daughter innocently dancing at the foot of her father's casket, unaware that he will never dance at her wedding. A young wife, Keisha. But I can't stress enough how much of a good father he was and still is to me. Too grief-stricken to speak at her husband's funeral. But a mother too proud not to. My son, Darren Maurice, was an incredible young man whose accomplishments most people only dream about. Darren's uncle Clarence thought for a moment he might not even attend today. Because I didn't want to see this. In the end, he had to. This is a young man he knew as a child. He watched his humanity develop over time. I wish I could say something bad about him, but you really can't because he had probably the biggest heart that you ever wanted. He knows how proud this young officer was to take the oath, and today, what hurts him most is that more people didn't know him. And that's all he was about, doing good things. But then I reminded him of that video, the one of the officer playing with neighborhood children, teaching them what a good officer is, a video that traveled the globe and was seen by millions. It wasn't a eulogy, but the Medal of Valor his nephew received that gave him peace on this day. It was that indeed millions got to meet his beloved nephew before he was called home. You know, sometimes very small things give very small pieces of comfort, and we certainly wish this entire family some peace and comfort. Guys, back to you.
absolutely too. No doubt. All right, Paula. Uh, just getting started on another busy news day. Ahead in the next hour, the Mackinac Bridge is forced to close, and it has nothing to do with the wind. And why this little guy right here poses a huge threat to the Great Lakes. Also, emotions run high as a woman comes face to face with her mother's killer in court. But first, President Trump makes a surprise announcement in the wake of the school shooting in Florida. What he's proposing that could move the needle on gun control. That's next. No. New at six. Flooding inside of Detroit home causes a raw sewage nightmare, forcing the tenants to move out. And it's even a problem for the next door neighbor. We'll show you. New at six. It is essentially a dream television. I would love to watch the Super Bowl on that thing. But the bottom line is it is going to help save lives if, unfortunately, something happens here in Macomb County. The new technology used that can save children in an active shooter situation. Short time ago, President Trump directed his attorney general to propose changes that would ban so-called bump stocks, which make it easier to fire rounds more quickly. Listen to this. I signed a memorandum directing the attorney general to propose regulations to ban all devices that turn legal weapons into machine guns. I expect that these critical regulations will be finalized, Jeff, very soon. Uh, meanwhile, less than a week after 17 people were killed at a South Florida high school, Florida State House has voted down a motion uh, to take up a bill that would ban assault rifles in Florida, effectively uh, killing that measure, at least for now. But survivors of last week's massacre are not giving up, taking their never again message to state lawmakers. More than 100 students are headed to Tallahassee for a rally tomorrow to try to make a change. They plan to push Florida lawmakers to do more to protect students from mass shootings, protection that students and faculty members from Stoneman Douglas High School did not receive. We have stared down the barrel of an AR-15 ourselves. I just don't think it's okay that we're 18, 16, 14 years old, and we're going to our friends, family, neighbors, siblings, funerals. I don't want to hear about the senators and the representatives saying this is not the time. This is the time. The rally will take place at the Florida State Capitol tomorrow, marking one week since 17 students and faculty members lost their lives. Well, we've uh, got a lot of rain in the southern lower peninsula. Ice, the big problem right now up north at the Mackinac Bridge. The bridge authority closed the bridge early, to traffic, uh, early this afternoon to traffic because of ice falling from the support cables. Happens from time to time. No injuries have been reported uh, this time around, fortunately. Bridge authority monitoring the situation. They will reopen the bridge to traffic as soon as conditions permit. So that's their problem down right. here. Yeah, we got too Boy. much rain and then the snow melting. It just has really created a mess. Yep. Yeah, and you know, we're more than halfway through this event, Good. but you know when flooding possibilities happen, it's usually the tail end mm -hmm. yeah. that's yeah. the biggest problem. Yeah. And we still so, any, so the sooner we can get through this, then. <laughs> we're hurrying it as yeah. fast as we can. Uh, some of these totals are uh, impressive to say the least. We're getting near the two inch mark. Ann Arbor 1.8. This is as of 4 p.m. Uh, close to that at Metro Airport. We got a report in it from Garden City, which is almost two inches, 1.93 uh, measured at 4 p.m. Just over an inch and a half there in Waterford, Harrison Township, about an inch and a third, and Monroe. Not quite an inch just yet. One of the lower totals uh, that we have seen, but the flooding pictures starting to come in on storm pins. Uh, this is uh, coming to us from Lola Valley Park. The Rouge Rivers we told you earlier uh, starting to flood and you can see that out there uh, up to the swing sets almost at the park. So uh, we're going to continue to watch these water levels rise. Unfortunately, at least for about the next 24 hours and possibly more. So we're getting a break from the rain except here in the northern sections of our metro and north zones. And even the northern part of our west zone too, still going with the wet weather. But the larger area of rain that's back here to the west is along a cold front, and that's going to start sweeping in as uh, we get later into the evening hours. So that will really ratchet up those totals overnight. And there's a possibility we could uh, see some thunder with that as well. But look at the difference uh, between that front. Obvious where that cold front is right there. Temperatures south of there, 75 right now in Columbus. Pittsburgh almost 80 degrees right now. We're at 60 as we 
told you we tied that record of 63 earlier, but we're kind of on the downslope right now. Temperatures are probably uh, stay relatively steady here through the evening, but then really drop like a rock tomorrow morning. So we've got a seven mile an hour wind. Obviously the wind chills no issue. Here comes the front rainfall will hang on through the overnight hours through the morning commute on Wednesday and then shut off probably by 10 o'clock, except for maybe the far east side still has some wet weather to go. Most of Wednesday will be dry. We sort of get a near miss from a system on Thursday, but Friday moisture comes back. Model showing that could start out as a little bit of a mix, but there will be some warmer air in here too. So most of that is going to be rain. The good news is there's a lot less of it in the back end of the forecast than what we're getting right now but it is still rain and we've got to account for that. Look at the temperatures tomorrow morning. 38 stepping out the door. Actually, this is 9 AM. This is probably when we'll set our lows for the period. South zone temperatures tomorrow going down to 36 at 9 AM in Blissfield, Lambertville, Luna Pier 38. The good news is, is I think everybody's going to stay above freezing, but not by much. 33 out here in Howell, Brighton, Milford, Fenton and Flint. So keep in mind, we've got all the standing water out there. Uh, I don't think that we'll see 32, but we're going to be awfully close here in the north zone in spots as well. Otherwise, temperatures rise only to 42 as we get into the afternoon. That's as good as we get even colder on Thursday at 39. Mild air comes back and so does the rain. We've got another three day stretch of rain from Friday through Sunday. <sighs> Right now, it looks like less than an inch for the three day stretch. So that's good news. But any rain on top of what we've got is not. This is what we get for complaining about the snow, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah, there's always something yeah. else around the next always, door. Always, yeah. you're right. Well, the rising water is also a concern in Redford Township, where Tim Pamplin found a car underwater. Just arriving on the scene here, this is Five Mile Beach Daily area, Graham and Lenan Street. You see the current there. I believe this may be Bell Creek runs through Redford, Livonia. The driver of that Ford, well, that's become an insurance claim. That's for these homeowners. Well, they can't get in nor out of their homes right now as the water continues to rise here. Again, the area of Five Mile and Beach Daily Road. One vehicle has become a victim of this flooding. Police have blocked off the road, asking you to avoid the area as the creek here continues to rise. That is a scene in Redford Township. Tim Pamplin, local four. Problems everywhere. And as we approach nightfall, some of these areas that were not underwater in the morning may yeah. be at night, so you've got to be watching yeah. for that. Mm -hmm. Alright, Ben. Uh, coming up, they put their lives on the line when it mattered most. New tonight, we're introducing you to Squad 5 and showing you what makes these guys real heroes. And they may be tiny, but these little guys are a very big problem. New tonight, why the bloody red shrimp could pose a danger here in Michigan. The Olympics are about tradition. But this year, some new twists on old themes. Oh, oh no. that Dutch skater yes. goes down. Bumping, drafting, sprinting. It's called Mass Start, one of three new sports at these 2018 Winter Olympics. Well, the Mass Start is like NASCAR on ice. On skates, skis, and boards. This is not your parents' Olympics. Three new sports adding new levels of speed, danger, and a little mayhem. What's not to like? Tomorrow at 5. Across Michigan tonight, the bloody red shrimp have made it to Lake Superior. Uh, first found in Lake Ontario and then Lake Michigan in 2006. Now documented findings of bloody red shrimp in all of the Great Lakes native to Eastern Europe. Scientists say they may have reached Lake Superior in a ship's ballast water as other invasive species have. Not clear yet how they will influence Great Lakes ecosystems. But scientists and researchers will be watching very closely. A Michigan sheriff apologizes for his offensive remarks following allegations of creating a hostile work environment, but intends to remain on the job. Sheriff Stephen Rand is under fire after Lieutenant Tommy Schutte filed a lawsuit. It alleges that Rand made insulting remarks against blacks, women, and Hispanics. It also claims Rand mocked the lieutenant for his work-related hearing loss. Many local leaders are still calling for his resignation. The grocery chain Albertsons is purchasing a chunk of Rite Aid. The chain is going to acquire the remainder of, the, of Rite Aid that isn't being sold to Walgreens. Two together will have about 4,900 locations, could generate about $83 billion in annual sales. Albertsons pharmacies will be rebranded as Rite Aid. Some Rite Aids will continue, though, to operate as standalone stores. New at 5.30. What Olympic sport could have been your calling? I think that's a very, very difficult sport to do. See which event just might have been your golden opportunity and which sports your local four favorites might have excelled into. Sorry just isn't enough. You took away 
everything to my son and me. The daughter of a woman murdered inside a Burlington coat factory comes face to face with her mother's killer. I'm sorry for what I've done. Sorry won't bring her back. An emotional confrontation between the family of a woman murdered inside a Burlington coat factory and her killer. Both prosecution and family today called the shooting that killed 49-year-old Lorraine Fajan stupid. She argued with Lynette Waller about how to do her job on a Sunday last October. The next morning, Waller came to work with her gun. Today, she and the daughter of the woman she killed exchanged emotional words. Almost immediately, emotions were uncontrollable. I haven't had a life without her until now. Um, so this is... <laughs> <laughs> 49 year old Lynette Waller pleaded guilty to second degree murder for killing her co worker Lorraine Faison last October at the Burlington Coat Factory in Taylor just before it opened. Surveillance captured the moments before she fired the fatal shot with her legally owned Glock. You took away everything to my son and me. That's everything to us. Today, Faison's daughter called what Waller did cowardly as she stood just feet away. My son is constantly every day breaking down, reaching out to a grandmother that's no longer there because he loves her and wants her there. And I got to be strong for him. Baby, my whole world is crushed. My whole world is crushed. Waller responded directly to Faison's daughter. I'm so very sorry for what I've done to your mother and to you. And when I think of the conversation that she has endured and had to have with her son, it just tears my everything up when he asks, where is his grandmother? The judge followed the sentence agreement and sentenced Waller to a minimum of 16 years in prison and a maximum of 40 plus two for a weapons charge. Well, it is a mess out there, whether you've got a flooded yard, perhaps leaking in the basement. We saw Dearborn with that car just submerged. It's a mess. Yeah, usually most times of the year the ground can soak up some of this stuff, but the ground's frozen. That's right. And it's like hitting concrete and it's just running off uh, and flooding lots of parts of the area. Four Live Radar shows about half of us getting a brief break from the rain that's going to last probably until the mid evening hours. So that's some good news still going here, uh, mainly across our north zone and north of I-69 especially. But you get back to the west and there's a line of some embedded heavier rain that's out ahead of the cold front just now starting to work into West Michigan. That's on its way here and we will see that rain continue to spread across the area later on tonight. Another shot that we got in on storm pins again this is from Lola Valley Park and you can see that's a road sign down there. And that water is almost to the bottom of that sign. If you don't have storm pins on your phone, go get it. It's free. It's the best way to get his pictures and videos as the flooding continues across southeast Michigan. The bottom line now through 10 a.m. is when we're looking for that rain to continue. Another one inch plus on top of what we've got already. Minor river and street flooding are going to be the biggest impacts, and we'll pinpoint where that's going to be the worst. Coming up, Jason. All right, I'll take it from you, Ben. Overnight storms caused damage and some injuries in Texas. Two people were rescued from storm debris after severe weather hit a mobile home in Joshua, Texas. That's 50 miles southwest of Dallas. Several other homes were also damaged, including one that completely flipped over onto a van. Both residents of that mobile home were taken to the hospital. The extent of their injuries unknown at this time. New charges by special counsel Robert Mueller unsealed this time against a lawyer who worked with former Trump campaign officials. All of this at a time when the calls for tighter gun laws grow louder and the president signaling a compromise. NBC's Edward Lawrence is at the White House this evening. This two page document was unsealed. It says that a lawyer with powerful Russian connections lied to the special counsel. Today, another shoe dropping in the Russia investigation. This time, the son-in-law of a Russian oligarch pleaded guilty. Special counsel Robert Mueller charged Alex Vanderswan with lying about contacts he had with former Trump campaign aide Rick Gates. I believe that today's plea is just one more step in that me methodical approach by Robert Mueller to reach that ultimate conclusion. So far, the special counsel charged nearly 20 people in the probe, including indicting 13 Russians last week. 
Today, President Trump continuing a days-long tweet storm, blaming former President Obama for not stopping Russian meddling, adding he thought crooked Hillary was going to win and he didn't want to rock the boat. It's very clear that Russia meddled in the election. It's also very clear that it didn't have an imp impact on the election. Also today, the president signaled a softening on gun control following last week's school shooting in Florida. Behind the scenes, he's said to be pushing a bipartisan bill to strengthen background checks. And during an awards ceremony with law enforcement, he announced action to ban so-called bump stock devices, like the one used in last year's mass shooting in Las Vegas. And just a few moments ago, I signed a memorandum directing the attorney general to propose regulations to ban all devices that turn legal weapons into machine guns. Some Democrats skeptical, others hopeful. This is a sign the politics of gun violence are shifting. The president will meet with students and teachers tomorrow to get their input on what gun control steps to take next. He then talks with state and local officials on Thursday. At the White House, Edward Lawrence, Local 4. Earlier this evening, Attorney General Jeff Sessions announced the formation of a cybersecurity task force, but the memo doesn't mention Russia or the ongoing investigation. Firefighters and EMS routinely risk their lives for the safety and well-being of others, but some truly go above and beyond the call of duty. Today, members of Detroit's Squad 5 were commended for their bravery and quick thinking, which saved the life of a Detroit woman last month. Our Kim DiGiulio has their story. This is the scene of a fire that broke out in late January. A woman was trapped inside of this home, but thanks to the training of fire crew Squad 5, they were able to get her out and save her life. Cartier Harris, a new member of Squad 5, has never experienced a rescue as serious as this one. It never happened to me before. It's my first time. Gerard Baber describes what it was like approaching the burning house on Grig Street in Detroit. Civilians breaking windows along with trying to get in, you know, it's serious. Squad 5 quickly went into the home to find the woman who was trapped. Did a search in the kitchen, couldn't find her, walked through fire. After getting trapped in the bedroom themselves, Squad 5 was able to escape and find the woman despite the fact that the place was filled with smoke and fire. They found the woman in the kitchen, pulled her out, started a few rounds of CPR, and she came back. That woman is continuing to live her life because of Squad 5, which is why the team was honored today. If not for the heroic efforts and selfless actions of the crew of Squad 5, the situation could have been far more tragic. Gerard, who has been a firefighter for just four years, says when he was in the house, he thought back to his training where he learned to not panic in a situation like this one. You have to stay calm and think rationally, and that's what makes us professionals. Cartier tells me that she was so proud of her bravery and plans to put this award on display. Oh, on my wall. I think I'm going to blow it up. <laughs> it got to be bigger. In Detroit, I'm Kim DiGiulio, Local 4. And this isn't Squad 5's first big commendation. Back in 2016, former Squad 5 member Eric Ivey received a Purple Heart for fighting through severe burns to help extinguish an apartment fire on the city's west side. Well, the U.S. has two more medals in two events that have been pretty good to the Americans so far, figure skating and the half pipe. Oh, I love the half pipe. That brings the U.S. medal count, by the way, to a cool dozen. NBC's Gina Kim joins us now live from Pyeongchang with more on what appears to be a winning streak. Good morning over there, Gina. Check out the bling I got around my neck. This is the real deal, the actual medals that the athletes are awarded here at the Olympics on special loan to us from the IOC and the Korea House. And let me tell you, they are so heavy. So, so far, we have won five of these, three of these, and now, as of last night, four of these. Siblings Maya and Alex Shibutani briefly took the number one spot after their free ice dance performance last night. Ultimately, they slid to bronze, with gold going to Canadians Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer, who are now the most decorated figure skaters in Olympic history. We're so proud of how we performed today. I mean, like, two, two medals is amazing. I'm just so, it's, I'm speechless. Whoa! Another bronze came from Britta Sigourney of Carmel, California, in the ski halfpipe. Canada took gold, France took silver. Sochi gold medalist Maddie Bowman broke down in sobs after falling at the end of all three of her runs to take 11th place. Here is Donato with 
the shot, he scores! U.S. men's ice hockey beat Slovakia 5-1 in an elimination round. They advanced to face the Czech Republic today for a spot in the semifinals. I think uh, we came in here knowing that we had to win. Obviously, we're going to go home. Uh, it's do or die. The winning could continue as Lindsey Vonn skis for a medal in Alpine Downhill and the American ladies take on day one of singles figure skating. And more doping news. A second test did confirm that a Russian curler did have a banned drug in his system. And so what will happen to him and the team from Russia will be determined shortly before the closing ceremony. And another Slovenian ice hockey player has now been accused of doping. In Pyeongchang, Gina Kim, Local 4. And before coverage begins tonight, be sure to tune in to the Ozone. We'll give, get you ready for all the action that's happening tonight in prime time as ladies figure skating begins the short program. And Lindsey Vaughn, as you heard, goes for the gold in the downhill. The Ozone is at 730 tonight right here on Local 4. Apple is sounding the alarm tonight. Update your iPhone. New at 530, how something called a text bomb could put all your information in jeopardy. And hey, KFC, you had one job. What has forced hundreds of its restaurants to close coming up? Hey, Kim. Hi, guys. What Olympic sport could have been your calling? Coming up, see which event just might have been your golden opportunity and which sports your local four favorites might have excelled at as well. That's coming up next. Primetime new at six. Blue and orange and sparkles, oh my. All of these gowns in mint condition ready for prom season. Why this project has turned into a passion for one local woman. All right, Jamie, plus DNA diets. They're trendy and seem to be based on science, but do they work? A big study is in. We'll have the results for you at six in good health. With the Olympics here, I think many of you have been asking, hmm, what sport could have been my calling? It's something you might have considered as you watched our local athletes go for the gold. How many times do you watch it? I could do that. Well, maybe. Not often. <laughs> uh, so do you know which event is your coulda, woulda, shoulda? Our Kimberly Gill is here to help us narrow it down. I definitely have wondered like you have, uh, Jason, but obviously certain people are better suited for certain sports based on body size, body type, endurance, and of course, talent and skill. But certain personalities are also drawn to specific sports, which makes it fun to see which sport would you do. Would you have slid to glory in skeleton? Soared to new heights on the ski jump? or perhaps rock the world of curling? It's intriguing to imagine what sport in which we might have excelled. Skating's fun, but I don't know, downhill? That looks like fun too. I mean, you know, it's, it kind of gets you excited about that. It's like, oh, I should, maybe I should try downhill or... Cross country skiing. Cross country skiing is one of these events where you get to succeed or fail on your own with your skills, you against the trail, the weather, and a little bit of strategy on. Beaumont Dr. James Picos has worked with numerous Olympians over the years. So what sport would have been his specialty? Probably the most interesting one that I would I would want to strive to do would be the biathlon. Because I think you, you really have to incorporate a lot of cardiovascular. You have to be strong, but then also kind of control your body to be able to shoot at a very small target and control your heart rate. I think that's a very, very difficult sport to do. If you need help narrowing down your choices, there are various online quizzes that take into account your physical and mental strengths, personality, as well as personal preferences. For Dr. Bikos, it was a split decision. I took two quizzes. One of them, I was supposed to be a bobsledder. It didn't say what position on it it was. And then the other one, it said that I should do skiing. I don't know about the bobsledding if I, if I agree with that. Um, and as far as the skiing, I, I do more snowboarding. So in my mind, I'd like to be like a Sean White and maybe to keep up with my son, but that will never, ever, ever happen. But it's still fun to dream. So for everybody at home, we put a link to the quiz on the Olympics page at clickondetroit.com. Go check it out. But we asked each of you to take the quiz, <laughs> it was which is why we're all assembled yes. here. Yeah. Uh, Karen, you're always graceful under pressure, so it's no surprise. Oh, my uh, goodness. Oh, 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 oh wow. 
Yeah. Um, ben, get stoked because uh, <laughs> yeah. oh, nice. you are secretly a snowboarder at heart. No stitches in the lip. <laughs> oh. Good. Good. Devin, we'll call you Flashpoint Skillion as you pilot the bobsled <laughs> down the track. Mm -hmm. I can see you doing that. Shoulders shoulders you got All right, that. Jason, get ready to slide for your life because it seems skeleton is your sport and... If they ever start a doubles team, count me in too because yeah. I got skeleton too. <laughs> and finally, we have Bernie Soren Smilovitz, <laughs> and we'll find you at the ski jump. <laughs> only, only at gunpoint, too. I'd like to say that. <laughs> it will never, ever happen. But it's fun to dream. It is. it is. Yeah. I even tried to change the answers on mine, and <laughs> See, it came up with the same, same one. Thing, so so I, I guess you're that's, destined I guess that's to right. be at these skills. So. It was fun taking the test. I did the both tests. They said figure skating, but I'm so klutzy, so I don't exactly <laughs> know why. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>